Well, Dave was a special man with a big heart who loved to help people. One of his strongest passions was giving people a hand up. He really enjoyed seeing people fulfill their potential and he did that at work, he did that in family life and in the community. He was kind and generous, he worked hard, he was very smart and he was interested in just many different things. Just a really good man. Well we moved here when Sarah was a baby, Sarah's our second daughter. She was born in Cary, North Carolina where Dave was working and then he took an early retirement because he really wanted to enjoy his second family. So we thought this area was very neat. This is where I still live. We have seven acres of land. He really enjoyed doing outdoor projects. The project he was most passionate about was building a walkway across a wetland area to a stream on our property and he put down the telephone poles and moved them all with levers and, 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 his, and his own strength and then made this lovely walkway. He was very proud of it. Dave had always liked the Habitat organisation. Um, he'd been involved with it during his working career. Their philosophy just resonated with his in giving people a hand up rather than a hand out. And he just loved being part of a construction crew <laughs> and uh, probably his favourite thing was working up on the roof. And he'd often come home with his feet almost burnt from the heat on the roof and but with a big smile on his face. Seeing his enthusiasm for that, he was invited to be a part of the church organisation in the, their involvement with Habitat and then from there he was invited on to the board. He had good organisational skills from his working life. He'd ended up as a director at Union Carbide. Late summer of 2008, Dave began to recognise some problems with recalling people's names, which had never been his strength, but he was having more noticeable problems with finding names and with finishing his sentences. And as soon as he went into the doctor's office, they recognised there was something not right. They identified a brain tumour and he had surgery a week later. And it turned out that it was brain cancer. And after that first surgery, I mean, he wasn't fully functional mentally. So he realised he couldn't continue with the Habitat board. One of the things that he focused on as a board member was trying to find land in the East Valley for Habitat to build affordable housing. His initiative led to the piece of land which has been purchased and where Dave's house is built in Swananoa. After the tumour came back in April, then it became gradually more and more challenging. The second surgery went well, but it came back again very quickly after that. We did some more chemotherapy, and the, the chemotherapy, they gradually became more aggressive, and his quality of life went down, and he was more and more challenged mentally and then physically. There came a point where we had to make the hard decision of just stopping treatment. It takes a while for them reality of that to really sink in and then to accept what had happened. Sort of randomly I got information about the women's build on the email at the beginning of 2011 and I had this idea that um, on the anniversary I would go and work for the Habitat site and I felt comfortable doing that on the, on the Women's Build House. So I put my name down and I mentioned it to a few of my friends and four of my friends came to join me and then coincidentally Betsy Warren came to join us as well and she was so delighted when she saw that I'd volunteered and, and when I told her why I'd volunteered. And then during our lunch break, she told us about an idea that she'd had. And she's the fundraising coordinator at Habitat. But she felt there was a lot of sort of pent up love for Dave in the community, that people would 
welcome the opportunity to express that by being able to give to a house built in Dave's memory. I thought it was a great idea, but I wasn't ready to take that on at that stage. And then later in the year, I approached her in, in the fall and said, I think I, I would, I am interested in doing that. And the children were on board about it as well, Jenny and Sarah, and Dave's older children. So then I talked with Betsy and she said that I could lead a fundraising campaign to raise about $55,000, which sort of was such a daunting figure. So I asked some of my friends whether they would be like to be involved with such an enterprise and, and several of them signed up enthusiastically and we had our first committee meeting and decided to call the house Dave's house. And we started with um, an open house, really as an informational um, event. I think about 100 people came, in fact. That set the scene, and then we sent a Christmas letter out asking people to consider alternative giving. Before I knew it, we had like $10,000, and that figure just kept going up. <laughs> it was very nice, you know, after just a few more months, it was at 15,000, and then we were approaching 20,000. And our other main fundraising event was about a year later. Thank you all for coming to support uh, Dave's House and the Habitat for Humanity event today. The first thing we're going to play is Blackberry Blossom. We did a second ask and the money just kept coming in. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> so it was very, it was very moving. My biggest reservation about taking on the project was I, I felt uncomfortable about the thought of asking for money. And, but the reality and the living of it was that we hardly had to ask and it just, we just let it know it was happening and the money came in. People like me or organisations, more, more usually churches or businesses, raise money for each of the houses. And then the land has to be purchased also. And in our particular case, two families bought the land. The Snyder family, I, I got to know a little bit, they bought it in memory of their daughter who had sadly died prematurely. So several of my friends came on the wall raising day and that was a day where we all worked. So we were actually constructing the walls and getting that ready for the celebration of raising one of the walls. A lot of people came <laughs> and it was a beautiful day. Betsy had the idea of people calling out words that resonated with their memory of Dave things like love and kindness and generosity and things like that and we put them all on sticky notes which we put into the wall space and then the Snyder family had this lovely very sweet idea of putting their daughter's picture in the wall space but I went back and put a picture of Dave into the wall space. The whole journey was a healing journey for me. It, I couldn't have done it right away. It was a year and a half after Dave passed. And over the next two years, that was very much a part of my healing journey. And the children too, I think, that they could witness something very special in the 